AppLem is a tool for quickly prototyping and building your own apps. If you've never coded before, you're best off starting with CS Principles Unit 3. It's a course that'll teach you how to code starting at the very beginning. If you have tried coding before, I'm going to show you how you can use AppLab to build your own apps really quickly. On the left, you have your app. In the middle, you've got your toolbox. And this has all of the different controls you need to build your app. And on the right, you have your workspace. In the toolbox, we have eight different sets of commands. The first section are UI controls. You can use the UI controls to uh, put buttons on the screen, to see what text somebody typed into something, or to set text on the screen. Anything that involves showing and displaying any object on the screen is going to be under UI controls. And if you ever don't know what something is, you can just hover over it. And what you'll see is you get a, a quick little instruction about it. Um, but click See Examples for more. Um, here you'll get sample code, things you can try out, uh, just to give you a sense of what somebody else might do with this function. And you can just copy and paste this code right into your own code. In the data section, you can save data to a database and get data from a database. In control, you'll find functions to allow you to uh, use if statements or loop or control the flow of your program. The variables will allow you to set variables or read variables. Um, it includes strings and uh, lists, which will allow you to create lists. Under Canvas, you'll find controls to let you put a canvas on the screen and draw different things into it, like circles, triangles, lines. Turtle is going to let you put a turtle on the screen. Um, and the turtle's not actually a turtle. We just call it turtle. It's just a dot. Uh, and you can use it to draw lines, turn, draw a different thing. Um, if you've ever used Artist in our CS Fundamentals courses, you'll find that the turtle works a lot like the artist. Math is all of your basic math functions. And in the Functions tab, you can build your very own functions. In App Lab, here's how you add lines of code. You can drag blocks out from the toolbox and snap them together and then click Run. Or if you'd prefer, you can type the command yourself. Either way you write your code, you can always flip between block mode and text mode. In fact, you can work in text mode and drag blocks out to insert the text. If you want to practice typing code, that's awesome. If you make an error, use the blocks as a way to check the exact right way to enter something. If you want to get rid of a line of code, just drag it off the screen or just delete the text. If you want to copy and paste code, you can drag a lasso around the blocks you want to copy, and then use the keyboard shortcuts, Control-C to copy and Control-V to paste. When I'm writing code, I actually like to start with design mode first. Design mode lets me set up exactly where I want the buttons and pictures on my screen to be before I go starting writing all the code. And to teach us about design mode, Kaylee is going to show us around. In App Lab, you'll see a switch right above the app that switches the toolbox from Code Toolbox to the Design Toolbox. We call this switching into design mode. In design mode, you can drag and drop user interface components onto the screen and position them wherever you like. You can also easily resize an element on the screen by clicking and dragging the little handle on the bottom right corner. On the right side of the screen, you'll see the design workspace, where you can see all the properties you can set for the selected element like the text of the button, position and size values, color for the background and text, the font size, and a few others. Different elements have different properties you can set. Once you've got an element on the screen, you'll need to make sure you can connect it with your code by setting the element's ID. When you set an ID in design mode, if you flip to code mode and drag an on event block, you'll see a pull down list of all the element IDs you created. If you made IDs that are descriptive and meaningful, it means it is easy to choose the ID of the element you want and add code to the event handling function. There's also a convenient way from design mode to insert an event handler in your code. In the design workspace, if you click on the events tab, you'll see one or more suggestions for typical events for this kind of element. You will see a link that says insert and show code. If you click it, it'll append an on event command to your code and set the ID of the element and event type for you. Whether you're adding an image element to your app or background images for buttons, you can enter the URL of the image you want to use. If the image is very large, you might need to set the width and height numbers so the resize handle fits in the window. Instead of entering a URL of an image, you can also click the Choose link next to the text box which lets you upload your own image and sound files from your computer to your app. When you upload a file, it goes into a list of assets you've uploaded so far. Once it's uploaded, you can choose that file. 
Lastly, you should know the screen itself is an element of your app. You can set the background color or background image for the screen. The screen also has an ID and can respond to events like any other element. For example, you might want to know when your user clicked on the screen. You can also have multiple screens in your app. To add a screen, you can drag out a screen element or use the pull down menu just above the design area. Once you add a screen, give it a meaningful ID. You can use the pull down menu to switch between screens in design mode. But how do you write code to control which screen to show? You'll see a command in the UI controls code toolbox called set screen. Set screen will change the app to show the screen specified by the ID you give it. When you drag the set screen command out into the workspace, its ID field will show a pull down menu of all the screens you've added to your app. Now you can change the screen in response to some event. So now that you've gone and designed your program and written some code for it, I just want to show you a few other features that you can use in App Lab. One of the features that I always use is the debugger. After I've written some code, uh, it always helps to be able to figure out why something's not working quite the way you thought it was going to work. The debugger in App Lab is right at the bottom of the screen. Uh, you can minimize it when you're not using it or pull it up whenever you're trying to figure out what's going on with your program. You can set breakpoints on any point um, just by clicking on it and you get this little blue highlight. That means that the code is going to stop there when I hit run. So here I'm going to hit run and when I click on the pig, I can see that my breakpoint is now highlighted and down in my debugger, I can see that I can hit continue to keep running. I can hit step over to step over this line and go on to the next line, step out or step in. There's also a debug console and in the debug console, you can type any command um, and you can also type any variable name to see the value of that variable at this point in time. So right now, if I type score, I can see that the score in my program right now is 10. It's a great way to tell what's going on and figure out how your program's working. Another good thing to use for debugging is your version history. If you do mess up and you want to go figure out what you did before, you can always click on your version history to go back to a previously saved point in your program. And when you're done, share your program with your friends. Click the share program to get a unique URL that you can send to your phone or to any of your friends. And when they use your app using that URL, all of the data will be shared in one database. So let's say you write a survey app to go ask how many of your friends like dogs and cats. Every single person's vote will be all tallied into one place and you'll be able to see all of their votes in your app. And we'd love to see what you made too. If you want to share it on Twitter or social media and tagco.org, we'd love to check out what you're making with App Lab. Thanks.